I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about vendor prefixes, media queries, JavaScript, and more. Let's check it out. Before we get started, we wanted to let you know about a brand new Treehouse course all about MailChimp. Now, when we say MailChimp, we are talking about the amazing email marketing tool and not a boy ape. Anyway, this free course on Treehouse will teach you how to use the MailChimp API. And I just want to make it clear, you do not have to be a Treehouse member to take this course. You can just head on over to Treehouse from the link in the show notes and immediately jump right in. And of course, the MailChimp API allows you to connect MailChimp to hundreds of third-party add-ons, plugins, and other useful services. You can add newsletter signups to your website, sync email activity with your database, integrate MailChimp and Shopify, and a whole bunch of other stuff with the MailChimp API. So anyway, go ahead and take this free course now over on Treehouse. And again, make sure to check out the link in the show notes. First up is this really cool tool called Auto Prefixer. Which automatically sets the menu price if you're eating the entire menu. That is not correct. Actually, it parses your CSS and adds vendor prefixes to rules based on can I use, which is, of course, the popular service for determining browser compatibility. Which so, we have covered on this show before. If we scroll down here, you can see Auto Prefixer here in action. Actually, it's just an example of how it works. But basically, you can write your CSS just as you normally would. So let's say you're using something more advanced like Flexbox that may not necessarily be supported in every browser just yet. Well, it will automatically prefix it for you. So here's an example of what that looks like. It's added the WebKit prefixes for the older and newer syntaxes, as well as the Microsoft syntax. And then it just has the final W3C recommendation down there at the bottom. So you can write in pure CSS as you would to the W3C specs, and then Auto Prefixer will produce the code for older browsers. So it works just like that. Also, if you have prefixes that are no longer needed, so let's say maybe you're using some other plugin or something and it's added things that are not necessary, or you're just not able to break the habit of, say, writing WebKit border radius and then a proper border radius right after that, Auto Prefixer will actually remove that because a prefix for border radius based on browser popularity is really no longer needed. Anyway, there's lots of other cool features in Auto Prefixer, so definitely be sure to check this one out. Very cool. Next up, we have a project called Clusterize.js. This takes all of the letter I's on your page and puts them into one DOM object. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't cluster I's. That didn't sound quite right. Nope. This uh, is a tiny plugin to display to display large data sets easily. So here, check this out. They have a nice little uh, thing right on the page here that shows you what's going on. OK, we fill this table with 5,000 rows. I scroll, and it's pretty laggy. What, what happens? Let's go ahead and use clusterize, right? We initialize it. Now we scroll this, and look at how smooth it is. Now there are 100,000 rows in this table, and it scrolls just as smoothly. Now, how does this work? So this is really interesting. What this does is it doesn't pollute the DOM with tags. It splits a list into clusters, then shows element for the scroll position, and adds rows to the top and bottom to emulate a full height of the table. So it's kind of tricking the browser into displaying only a little bit at a time. But still, it does a great job and is very, very quick. So. Look at that. It supports more than tables. We have an ordered list right here. All of these, ha that has 50,000 rows. I scrolled a little bit too far here. Here's an unordered list and also different divs. So they say it can be used with basically any tag that you want. So you can install Clusterize with Bower, include it on your page, and then give it the data 
and call a new clusterize. As you would expect, it supports different options for initialization, tags, how many rows are in a block, and how many blocks are in a cluster. So really great plugin, especially if you have large data sets that you need to display on your page. Go ahead and check that out. We'll have a link in the show notes right below this video. Next up on the SAS Break blog, there is an article titled, Making Our Media Query Mix Mix-ins More Flexible. And there's a great picture here demonstrating how you need to code these in a flexible manner. I think if I were to do that, I would SAS Break my back. Probably. Uh, <laughs> so here is a mix-in demonstrating how media queries are sometimes written and then how that mix-in is used. So you might have something like this where you have a mix-in called breakpoint and you're passing in the variable point and you say something like, well, if it's small, then apply this media query and if it's medium, do this. If it's large, do this. And of course, they're using M's here. Well, that may not necessarily be the best way to do it. You want to have something that may be a little bit more flexible than that rather than just predefining these M's because the problem is that it's hard to figure out what M's are representing anyway. You have to sort of do the calculation on your own beforehand and it's difficult because we're a little bit more used to dealing with things in pixels. We're always given the width of the browser in pixels, for example, with lots of developer tools. So if we scroll down here, the article does talk about that a little bit and there's also some nice links to why you would want to use M's over pixels in your media queries. Basically, the reasoning is that when you zoom in on the browser, it will adjust accordingly. So if you're maybe leaned back in your chair a little bit or if you need the browser size to be larger so you can read it more easily, using M's in your media queries will make the browser adjust a little bit more nicely, whereas pixels are fixed units. So the solution here, instead of using those fixed small, medium, and large mix-ins that are named or media queries that are named, you can actually use a mix-in that looks like this. And you can do the calculation using pixels and the base font size and then get the M result. So instead you could say something like, well, I want this to happen if the browser is 600 pixels or what have you, and then it automatically takes that in and does the calculation for you, and you get something that looks like this. So that's a much more flexible way to handle SAS mix-in media queries, and yeah, I think it's a, a much better way of approaching it than using small, medium, and large. Me too. Next up, we have a reintroduction to JavaScript over on the Mozilla Development Network. Now, why in the world do you want a reintroduction to JavaScript? Well, let's go ahead and rewrite a JavaScript tutorial based on modern JavaScript. So this is a really great article. It starts off with a little bit of history of JavaScript. And when I say a little bit, I mean there's only five paragraphs, and one of them is a single sentence. So that catches you up to speed with previous versions of JavaScript. And what's nice about this tutorial is it goes over the built-in types, including symbols which are new in ECMAScript 6. So this is going to be a very modern JavaScript tutorial and introduction. So what I really liked about this, and we're not going to go into the whole thing because this is a very, very long article. But what I really liked about this was how they talk about functions and then lead up to using your own objects and classes. So they talk about using a person object or a person class. And there's more depth if you want to go into object-oriented JavaScript, but they show you how you would do the same thing using just functions to create a person. And then this builds up all the way into a class and object-oriented based function for creating a person. 
So anyway, this is a great introduction. If you're familiar with JavaScript already, you can even get a little bit out of this, just kind of have a refresher on maybe some of the finer points. And if you know anybody who is learning JavaScript, send them to this page just for a general introduction of what modern JavaScript is like. Next up is this neat tool that basically will take your confirmation boxes and just make them a little bit nicer. It's called Medium Style Confirm. And it's available on GitHub. And right here, we have some examples of how it works. So I can just click on this simple example where I'm presented with this confirmation box that says delete. And I can either choose OK or cancel. I'll say cancel, and it will just close. However, if I hit OK, I'll be presented with a JavaScript alert in the browser that says the post has been deleted. Now, this is useful because when you present confirmation boxes, typically just using vanilla JavaScript, it's often hard to phrase the confirmations the way that you might want to phrase them. It's, it's hard to say you know, what you're doing or what you're deleting. What, Are you oh, not sure you don't want to delete this? Are you going to cancel the deletion or Do you have you, any regrets about canceling this deletion, yes you know, or no? It's very confusing, and you end up with situations where there's a lot of double negatives, and the user isn't necessarily sure what it is OK or cancel is actually going to do. So this kind of prettifies that whole situation and makes it look a lot nicer. And you can even do it with a subtitle to add some further clarification saying, delete. Are you sure you want to delete this post? And you can say, OK, or cancel. So of course, you could do this for more than just deletions. You could do this for any type of action that you might want. And you can customize the text however you want. But really, it just simplifies those confirmations a whole lot and makes it much better for, say, a copywriter on your team. So to use it, you can install it via Bower, or you can download the media style con con confirmation style.css file. Wow, that was difficult to say. And you have to get the associated JavaScript file as well. And then you just include it into your HTML as you normally would. And then you can just call the code msc confirm function as you see in these demos. So pretty easy to use and solves a typically somewhat difficult problem uh, really nicely. I really like this. So let me just confirm, is that all we have time for this week? I think it is. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes right below this video. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.